Good evening, everybody. What I want to talk about today is adrenal fatigue. Welcome to the last few days of dog car time. Everybody's buckled in and safe. So adrenal fatigue is very common. It's often uh, more of like a syndrome than a real problem. And it deals with the four S hormones, which is salt, sex, sugar, and stress. So it deals with salt, high blood pressure. Usually when your adrenals are fatigued, you'll get low blood pressure or get a little dizzy low blood pressure when you stand up. Can also deal with aldosterone. Also deals with sex hormones like DHEA, which converts into testosterone and other sex hormones and is responsible for a healthy libido and motivation and energy to wake you up in the morning. Then it deals with stress hormones like adrenaline. Adrenals create adrenaline, adrenal adrenaline. So it deals with epinephrine, norepinephrine, cortisol, because the sugar one is cortisol, which is a sh sugar and an energy hormone that basically wakes you up in the morning and helps lower down after dinner time and helps you relax to fall asleep at night. And um, if you don't have a healthy normal cortisol rhythm where it's up high in the morning and then low at night, then you might be really fatigued or you might get an afternoon lull or you might not wake up with any feeling like rejuvenated or revived, which could be a lot of things with the sleep factor, but a lot of people overlook sleep apnea actually. Um, so if you're snoring or you're waking up at night a whole lot, you might want to check out and screen yourself for sleep apnea. But anyways, adrenal fatigue is not like always a clear medical pathogenic diagnosis in conventional mainstream medicine. It's more like a syndrome or a pattern and you might have a little bit of it or a lot of bit of it and it does relate to your whole endocrine, hypothalamus, pituitary, adrenal, thyroid axis and all of those things. And it's like a giant orchestra so we can't always just blame your adrenals. We can blame a lot of things. We could blame, blame we could call adrenal fatigue mitochondrial dysfunction. We could call it a mold or a chronic inflammatory response or an autonomic nervous system dysfunction. There's a lot of ways to categorize and label symptoms and what's going on. If you really wanna see if it's truly an adrenal problem, you can test and look at normal blood work and blood hormones and cortisol in the morning, and you can do saliva tests, you can do a Dutch urine test, but none of that's super necessary. Um, I usually find blood work shows enough with like low DHA or low testosterone or low cortisol or other signs or symptoms in blood work and markers that will show objectively that there is a pattern of adrenal fatigue or the electrolytes will be really wonky, or you know you can do all kinds of stuff. But if you look at our nonprofit website, healthassurancemovement.org, you can take a symptom quiz to see what symptoms you might have related to your adrenal glands. But what I really wanna talk about is how you fix your adrenals. And generally what you want to do is lower stress or view the stress as a positive in your life. So do like Byron Katie work and view your stress as actually beneficial to you and your growth or the stress that you're viewing as negative start to realize that it could be positive and like what would it be like if it was reversed what if the exact opposite happened what would be good or bad about the exact opposite of what's currently going on so you start to gain a perspective as how things could actually not all be purely negative but might actually have some positives long term now there are things that are purely negative and those are rare but they do happen and it's okay to acknowledge those things but General life stresses like someone cutting you off or being a little late to work or you know your coffee didn't get made the right way, you can reframe that to view it as not a big deal or as more of a positive. And that all really helps. How you view the stress is extremely important. So lowering stress is really big. The other thing is lowering any type of medications or drugs or stimulants like caffeine, like alcohol, like marijuana. Like the less you do of various drugs, Ideally, you do them not every day, but just once in a while with a purpose or an intention behind it so you don't, your body doesn't become dependent on it or addicted to it, which can be problematic. So you have to be careful with overdoing caffeine or relying on caffeine to wake you up and then relying on alcohol to go to bed at night. So it's nearly impossible to get your adrenals better if you're having more than one cup of caffeine a day. Um, it's also very hard to get them better if you're relying on something as another type of stimulant or another depressant to help you wake up, get through the day, and go to bed. Now you can use um, B-complexes, like B-complex plus by Pure Encapsulations or magnesium um, to wake yourself at night and go to bed and support those things because basically B vitamins, magnesium, and a vitamin C with a buffered C with bioflavonoids, like not just pure ascorbic acid, the synthetic vitamin C, but like a whole foods vitamin C with bioplanoids really helps your adrenals function better because they're the number one, your adrenals are the number one concentration of vitamin C in your body. So they really need that. The other thing is you might want to actually 
um, think about not overtraining, not overworking, not over adrenalizing yourself because that tends to really wear out your adrenals too. So if you're like doing a lot of CrossFit or HIIT training or really intense exercise, you may be burning out your adrenals or it might be too much adrenaline for your body to handle long term. So Phil Maffetone has a really great heart rate, very heart rate um, zone calculator that you can look up. You can look up Phil Maffetone and Maffetone method and he's a great resource for all that kind of stuff. Now, um, some type of movement helps a lot, sunlight helps a lot, but really you have to mitigate the stress in your life, avoid a lot of stimulants, and then you can take things that are um, adaptogens, which help quite a lot. So ashwagandha is a great one, rhodiola, ginseng, magnolia will calm you down, L-theanine can help a little bit with like sleep and focus, um, but there's tons of adaptogens. Um, but ashwagandha, rhodiola, ginseng, licorice, eleuthero are all really classic ones, but ginseng can be a little too stimulatory for some people. So adaptogens help, vitamin C, B, magnesium, um, and just having fun in your life. Your adrenals are about motivation and they're also a little bit about life purpose. So if you feel like you're losing purpose in your life, then that could be a problem too. So maybe you actually need it's like it's like why do you need the energy do you need the energy to fulfill some mission that you're on um, because generally if your life requires energy your spirit your body will find some reserve somewhere to kind of like give it to you hey guys relax um so yeah that's it um i hope that makes sense gives you a little overview of what your adrenal glands do how they affect you the role that they play with your sex hormones and energy and um blood pressure regulation or dysregulation, and um, sugar. Oh, I forgot one of the biggest things is balancing your blood sugar, extremely important. So fasting, intermittent fasting, or just fasting in general, can be very hard on your adrenal glands. So oftentimes, um, you'll get low blood sugar when you have adrenal issues or adrenal dysfunction. So one of the best ways to really support your adrenals is to keep your blood sugar stable, which means usually having three meals a day, sometimes even more snacks, in between and really balancing the fat and protein. So trying to have fat and or protein with every meal and a little bit less carbohydrates because the more you have fat and protein, the more your blood sugar is stable. It's like putting a wood burning log on your fire instead of a whole bunch of kindling because sugar, simple carbs are like kindling. Liquid sugar is like gasoline and uh, caffeine is like gasoline on top of a bunch of fireworks. It's like sets off your adrenals super strong and then you crash later. Um, and that tends to make anxiety worse as well. So your adrenals are super important and stabilizing your blood sugar is one of the most primary steps, avoiding stimulants, getting enough sleep, reducing the stress or viewing the stress differently and um, finding a purpose in your life. So I hope that gives you a general like overview of certain, some things that you can start to do to really balance out your own adrenal gland function because I guarantee if your adrenals are working well, you won't feel cold, you won't really feel tired, you won't really feel down, um, unexplainably down all the time, you won't like cry for no reason, your cycles will be improved, your energy will be improved, your general outlook on the state of the world and life will be improved, and um, everything just gets better and bothers you less. It's kind of like when stress happens, it should be less of a roller coaster and more of like a kiddie coaster where you're like, oh, oh, this isn't so bad rather than freaking out at what's happening or getting super worried or depressed or down or mad or all those things. So when you have a healthy endocrine hormonal system, stuff just doesn't really bother you nearly as much. I think that's part of why I'm just a chill person is I have really strong adrenal glands, I think from genetics, from family, but then also just like I burned them out and then I learned how to take care of them and revive them. And I literally had to, like they were so burnt out, I was so fatigued that I literally had to just sleep like four or five, six hours during the day and a full night's sleep at night for months in order to just like rest enough for them to recover, which is very rare for anyone to need that level of fatigue. Um, but I do know other people who have just overworked themselves to that level where they physically just need months of like a break and downtime. But that's also why it's important to take breaks. It's important to rest. It's important to take vacation. It's important to do things that are relaxing. Ideally, you would be doing about nine hours a day of either sleeping or restful eating or rest or stretching or calm exercise or yoga or meditation or whatever it is. But nine hours a day at least should be donated, devoted to something that's just like peaceful or calm, not amping you up. And if you really want to reverse them, switch it. 15 hours a day of calm, nine hours of activity. But hope that all helps. Love you all. Have a good day. Bye.